Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. <clears throat> um, welcome to tonight's Spotlight on Citizens, where we are pleased to recognize some of Hampton's wonderful and accomplished young people. Tonight, our focus will be on valedictorians and salutatorians from our high schools. I'm going to ask Brian McCasey to give us and get us started. Thank you, Mayor Wallace, members of council, city manager Bunting, and city attorney Val DeJulie, as well as uh, the public. Tonight is everyone's favorite spotlight on citizens, I think, for, for the year, and with good reason. Um, it's the night that we, as the mayor said, recognize um, some of Hampton's outstanding uh, academic achievement um, students here uh, in Hampton City Schools, um, our 2015 valedictor valedictorians and salutatorians. Uh, many of the graduates from Hampton's four high schools will be continuing their education, both in Virginia and around the, um, and around the nation. Um, many students of our students received athletic and academic scholarships, and some of these institutions that they were accepted to um, for the class of 2019 include uh, Christopher Newport University, Davidson, Emory and Henry, Georgetown, Hampton University, Howard, James Madison, Johns Hopkins, Marymount, Morehouse, Oberlin, Radford, The Apprentice School, William & Mary, University of Nebraska, UVA, Virginia Tech, Radford, Richmond, Vanderbilt, just to name a few. Um, tonight we are honored to have these students' families, their principals, um, Superintendent Shiflett is in, the, in attendance, as well as um, many of the school board members. Um, so let's get started. Uh, yes, sir. Before we get started, let's meet, make the meeting official. Okay. So, allow me <laughs> to ask the clerk to call the roll of the council, please, and then we'll get the young people coming forward. Understand. Vice Mayor Curtis. Present. Councilman Hobbs. Present. Councilman Moffitt. Present. Councilwoman Schmidt. Here. Councilwoman Sneed. Here. Councilman Tuck. Present. Mayor Wallace. Here. Now, Brian, please continue. So now let's really get started. <laughs> so um, tonight we, we're going to do things a little bit differently than we've done in the past. Um, we're going to re recognize each school's valedictory and salutatorian with a short video produced by the TV station, um, each school at a time. So um, we won't do a long video of all the schools. We'll do um, each school uh, individually. Then we'll have the students come up uh, with the mayor um, to uh, receive a, um, a plaque on behalf of council. Um, in addition, um, something for you guys to look out for, uh, the city is going to honor the um, graduating classes from each of these schools uh, by lighting up City Hall um, in the colors of uh, your school. So Phoebus uh, will be the night of June 1st. It will be lit up, the City Hall will be lit up in, in your school colors. Kikitan will be the, uh, on June 2nd. Bethel will be on June 3rd. And Hampton High will be on June 4th. So that's something to look forward to next week. Um, we're going to be starting with Kinkatan um, and Phoebus because they each have a student that needs to um, head off to the Governor's School graduation. So um, we'll start uh, the evening with Kinkatan High School's video. I'm Linda Shiflett, Superintendent of Hampton City Schools. I would like to take this time to offer congratulations to our 2015 valedictorians and salutatorians for their outstanding achievements during their high school careers. What a pleasure it has been to see these students excel, not only in the classroom, but in their many other interests and extracurricular activities. Let's meet some of Hampton City Schools' finest students. Chow, and I'm the valedictorian of the class of 2015 at Kikatan High School. Center, I usually work with the little kids at like the summer camps or the daycare camps after school. So, and I've been the oldest in my family and I'm just used to kids and I, I really love little kids and so I'm used to working with them. We do 
science labs. Like I know we did an egg drop and we do a lot of just science activities like you would normally do in a lab. And it's really fun because I know the, the little kids really like it a lot. I was really excited because I, it was a lot of hard work. Like I'm, I'm not just some super genius where everything just comes easily. I had to work really hard to get where I was right now. Definitely a lot of studying. Like, I know normally people don't read the textbook, but I read the textbook like thoroughly through and through. And there's been times where I've had to stay up maybe the whole night. So my parents are really strict on schoolwork. And I think that's because they didn't get to go to college and they didn't have that opportunity. So they were really strict on me about that. And um, also my brother. Art, because it's a lot, it's much more different than schoolwork like math and English and social studies. Art is like more creative and I get to be more expressive with my thoughts. I was accepted to Virginia Tech, uh, Boston College, and UVA. And um, I chose UVA because, well, my brother also goes there. And so that was one of the big factors. But I also, I've heard a lot about the school and I just felt like it was the right place for me. I know when I graduate from high school, I'm gonna have to be a lot more independent than I am even now. So I guess I'm just gonna miss the fun times of just being with friends and not having to worry too much about adult life, like bills and things I'm gonna have to worry about in the future and still volunteer with kids a lot because that's something I really love doing. So, how are you guys going to make your All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. All right, so... Do you know? Hi, my name is Chris Dress Philly, and I'm the salutatorian of the Kikatan High School Class of 2015. So I started tennis the spring of my freshman year and before high school I wasn't really athletic and when I joined a tennis team I just thought okay I'll start right now and so it just turned out to be loads of fun. I didn't expect myself to have that much fun because I wasn't athletic before but because all the team was supportive and going to matches just really made me so happy and all of the friends I made throughout the season just made it a great experience and it pushed me to become a better athlete and that year I actually went undefeated my freshman year and I was the most valuable player and then the next year with my doubles partner we won the district championship and we got on went to regionals and after that it's just been so much fun I mean you know when I go to school I just work hard and I like enjoying I just enjoy the work class and going to learn about everything. So I mean, grade, I didn't really put it as a priority. I just wanted to learn as much as I can. So when I heard about the salutatorian, I was just, it's just a nice afterthought after having a lot of fun at school. First, I'd like to talk about my parents. My mom, she actually was salutatorian when she was in high school. So that's pretty cool that I get to follow along with that. And she's just, a very wonderful individual. She's a go-getter and she's so, you know, hardy and she works hard and she always goes after everything she wants. And sometimes I lack that confidence, but I feel like she's my personal cheerleader and just a nice role model that I always have there. And a lot of upperclassmen that have been very successful and very helpful have been helpful to me. <laughs> I just have a great passion for what I do, so I always try to make things work out, and that also involves a lot of communication with your teachers, your parents, just everyone involved, and you want to make sure you set a schedule for yourself and you don't overwork yourself to give yourself time to relax and just take a break from everything, but also just try to enjoy what you do instead of thinking it's a chore. 
I was accepted to William and Mary as a Monroe Scholar and VCU with a full scholarship and St. John's University in New York with a scholarship there and UVA. And UVA has always been that school that I just imagined myself going to. And so when I finally visited, I felt like I was at home and that I could thrive there because the campus was always buzzing with things to do and everyone was so involved and I just wanted to be a part of that. And it just has top-notch academics and that just made it the perfect school for me. So the first thing I would say is don't be afraid to ask for help when you need it. We see a lot of people and they struggle on their own and they're too afraid to ask people for help like from their friends or their family or for a teacher or a counselor. But if you just go and say you need help, there are a lot of open hands willing to give you some assistance. And the second piece of advice that I have is don't be afraid to try new things because you never know if you'll be interested in something that you never would have thought you would have been interested in before. Hey, give her a face. <laughs> okay, um, could I please have, yeah, applause. <laughs> could I please have Allison Chow and uh, Christina Aspili come up, come forward? Next, we have uh, Phoebus High School, and we're going to play their video now. My name is Jessica Cordner, valedictorian of Phoebus High School, class of 2015. The reason I came here was because of the engineering programs and stuff, but also because my best friend goes here and we were like, oh, it's going to be cool if we play softball together. And I was like, yeah, we can finally be on the same team because we live in different parts of, the, of Hampton. So um, that was one, a big part of why I love playing softball is with my best friend. And, with, and I've met so many people on the team that just like, have the same passion and share the same interests that I do. So that's I, like the team like connection is just amazing. It's just something that I can let go, have fun doing, and I don't have to sit home and just do work all the time. I can just have fun and relax and kind of just play the game that I just love to play. I, I, if I hadn't figured out that I was kind of one or two at the top my freshman year, I probably wouldn't have even thought about it. But since I was up there, I was like, well, why not just try and keep it up there? So I was trying, it's been like a long time coming, just trying to keep it up and keep everything up. So it was just a relief and like kind of a thank God moment that I finally got here. The people that mostly influenced me were my parents, just because they were like, well, you're at the top, why don't you try and stay at the top? And so they were the ones that were on me all the time about, get your schoolwork done. You can't go out here because you have to do this first. And it's kind of like, they kept me on top of things. And my counselors in middle school helped me a lot with that too, because they, they knew that I was, um, just because of my personality and stuff, that I could, I could make it. <laughs> so they, um, they were always pushing me like, well, what are your options here? And they really helped me with my options and stuff. And that they have really had a big influence me, well, on me. I was accepted to Virginia Tech, ODU, and Clemson. And I chose ODU because a lot of my, well, most of my family went there before I did, and they gave me the most money. So that's why I chose ODU. We could pick anywhere that we wanted to go. Whoever wanted us, that's who we looked at. And I was looking at Jefferson Lab and NASA, and I thought, well, NASA's right here. I can just go whenever I want. and. Um, the people there, because my dad works there, so
so I knew kind of the people in the environment that it was and they're all so friendly and they all help you out and they want to help you out it's not like oh she's an a senior and she's just, she's just here they're like okay well why don't you do this for me and then I'll, you're kind of like they're undergrad <laughs> they make you do everything that they don't want to do so but it's nice to get that experience especially because they do research and stuff and that's what we do in governor school so it kind of all connects together and that's what I liked about it you get out what you put in if you don't put it into anything anything into what you want to do then you're not going to get anything out of it and if you really want to do something then you should put everything that you have into it just like softball, like I really want to play softball, so I'm going to give everything that I have to play and help out my team. And I really wanted to stay up in my grades, so I'm going to do everything I can to do that first, and then everything else comes kind of second. Hi, I'm Sadie Ullman. I'm the salutatorian of Phoebus High School, class of 2015. Good girl. I was in gymnastics for about 12 years and then I got injured and uh, I was looking for something else to do and we always, drive, we always drove past the barn on our way to school and I was like, well mom, let's go there. And so we went and the barn owner was incredibly nice and the first day I was there he put me on a horse and I, I just fell in love. It's difficult to do, it's not an easy thing to do. You have to control a almost two-ton animal by yourself. And people think that it's easier than it is, but really it's not, because you have to have an actual connection to the horse. And it's, it's way harder than it looks. And it's, I think it looks nice when you're actually on the horse and you have a good connection. And you can tell when someone has a good connection with their horse. And my horse and I have a great connection and it's just, as cliche, as cliche as it sounds, it just, your horse gives you wings, the wings that you don't have. So it's fun to go fast sometimes on your horse. <laughs> I've never really worked for titles in my life, so I just kind of do what I'm supposed to do and what I come, what comes with it is what I get. I try to make time for, um, for social life and for my academics as well. I normally, there's normally, at least one day during the weekend when I go out and I'm just all for my horseback riding. And then normally Sundays is when I just work on schoolwork and I try to get everything done. And if I can't get everything done, then it's all right. <laughs> I got accepted to Virginia Tech, uh, University of Iowa, and Marshall University. But inevitably, I chose Marshall University because of the distance that is away from my house. It's not far, but it's not too close to home and the environment that it's in. It's in the mountains and with a geology degree, I think that will suit me a lot. It felt more like a small community rather than, because Iowa University and Virginia Tech are larger schools. So when I went to visit them, I felt more individualized there rather than at Marshall where I felt like I was part of a community. I'd like to become a paleontologist and work in a museum, preferably the Smithsonian. I when I was younger, I used to watch uh, The Land Before Time, and I, it really stuck with me. I don't know why I'm so interested in it, but it's just, and there's so many things you can do with it. You can go into petroleum, you can go into like the gemstones, and there's a lot of different things you can do with that one degree. Just don't stress. Don't stress about anything, because stress only brings you uh, problems later on. You just just keep going when, with the flow and just keep pushing because everything that you do is working towards this point. And as soon as you get to this point, it's really smooth sailing. Good girl, Justine. You're such a good girl. Could I please have, um, I don't believe uh, actually Jesse was able to make it this evening. Um, and so could I please have Sadie Ullman come up? And uh, Principal Bever Beverly?
Okay, and next we're going to have Hampton High School. Hi, I'm Wyatt Booth, the 2015 valedictorian of Hampton High School. I found that photography was actually pretty cool as a form of self-expression and I really, really got into it and I'm not exactly the most artistically inclined when it comes to drawing or painting or anything, but I feel like photography really captures me. Well, I've been number one since freshman year, so I guess I just kind of got used to the idea and um, the salutatorian and I have always been extremely close, so it was kind of nice, friendly competition uh, throughout the four years, but I'm really, really glad that I feel that I can represent the senior class as it should be represented. Everyone that's come into my life at some point or another has influenced me in some way, shape, or form, um, whether it's indirectly my favorite author, Stephen King, and his ideologies, um, my parents who raised me with a wonderful foundation, and my teachers whom I see every day for seven hours, and especially my friends, though. I would have to say that my friends are always there for me, and that's really nice to have that kind of support. I was accepted to Virginia Commonwealth University, Virginia Wesleyan, uh, Hampton, Sydney. I chose to attend Virginia Commonwealth University because I was offered a scholarship for full tuition, room, and board, and also guaranteed acceptance to dental school as a freshman. So it's definitely my best offer. Um, personally, I'm hearing impaired. So from a very, very early age, I felt like I wasn't quite understood by my teachers or by my fellow friends. and. It was very, very difficult to excel in school, and a lot of people would look at my grades and say, well, you have an A, you're doing perfectly fine, and I had to learn at a very, very young age to advocate for myself, and sadly, a lot of other students and a lot of uh, fellow disabled are not as prepared to advocate for themselves as they need to be or should be at this age, um, so I feel like having an occupation in the medical field would allow me an opportunity to um, understand people better and I actually have a lot more empathy as well as sympathy so I understand what they're going through and I feel like I can really put that to use. Hello, I'm Nora Chen. I am the salutatorian of Hampton High School of 2015. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I am being really proud of myself being in, um, able to help my parents in the restaurant and how not just by helping them, making them proud of me, but at the same time, I can gain all of the experiences that other um, students are not able to gain at this age. And I believe that like how to fix toilets or like sewer pipes and stuff like that, or even how to cook, it will help me become um, really um, successful in life. So I won't be able to, um, at least I know how to handle this situation. My parents were first generation immigrants and so they don't, they don't know any English. Um, I help them making calls and I help them um, talk to people and then, you know, do the payroll, um, getting all the materials and stuff like that. And that's why how I want to major in business because my parent has um, not just the business, the Chinese restaurant, but they also have other parking lots that they rent to other people. So me acting as an agent, it's like when they don't pay the rent, I will be the one go over there and be like, oh, you have to pay the rent. Or if they have anything um, happen, like, you know, ceiling leaks or sewage pipe issues. So I know all of these and I know how to, uh, so I know who to contact. I know um, how to handle situations like that. I first know that I was number two when I was a freshman and I have never thought about becoming number three since that day I know I was number two. Because it's not just because I am proud of myself becoming number two, but I am also um, want to make my parents proud that if I'm number two, I'll try my hardest to keep as number two or possibly becoming the number one. So um, I never actually give up or actually become, I, I don't want to say slack off, to become number three. So since the day I know I'm number two, I have been working really hard to maintain my rank. And I understand how GPA really matters and then how college works. That's why I have never um, thought about ever becoming number three. The person that influenced me the most is my dad. Um, because my dad as a um, 
first gener uh, generation immigrants. He, he came to uh, the U.S. with um, no backgrounds, no family, no money, and uh, of course, no no English. So he started working in a Chinese restaurant because that's it's not that he wants to do a Chinese restaurant. It's because that's the only thing he knows how to do. So he started his business. But he told me that right now he's successful, and he always teach me that whenever you work with someone, it's always better to go out and work and gain experiences, but only for a certain amount of time. And my dad, since he is not that educated, he only finished fifth grade education in China through to because he was uh, poor and stuff. But that never stopped him from becoming successful. So for me, that I want to not just being um, we're performing good in school at the same time, it's something like if I become a number two, it's kind of like having helping him finish his education, but through me. So that's how I have been working so hard to try to become number two and, you know, go to good colleges because I will be the first one going to college. I have accepted to. George Mason University, VCU, um, William & Mary, Virginia Tech, and then um, NYU. But at the same time, I decided to choose um, UVA as my, I guess, destination or uh, my future place is because I want to major myself into um, business and how in finance. So UVA, I checked on the world ranking. It was ranked number seven in the nation for finance uh, graduate school. and but. NYU was number two, so I couldn't go to a better uh, business school. But at the same time, I need to look at the advantage and disadvantage because New York, of course, will give you all of the better experience and opportunities because it is the world's finance center. It's better for me to go and seek for internship and uh, po possibly working at Wall Street. But at the same time, when UVA offered me a 14,000 scholarship, which I can actually um, save me a lot of money, I want to go to somewhere that's actually really um, creative and intelligent. So that's why I choose UVA. So every, every day after school, if I have clubs, I'll stay in clubs. And then I would um, call my parents to come and pick me up. You know, parents, they, they usually get annoyed and fuss at me all the time if I'm late. So after that, around four or five, I start working at my restaurant, helping out until around eight. After eight, I do my homework sometimes in the restaurant as well. So after eight, I would go to um, go home and start my other homeworks and stuff like that. But if I have other activities I'm supposed to do, I will um, set my homework for the other, like, you know, do, that's not due tomorrow, assign and work on it some other days. But to me, man, time management and IB is just something that you will gradually learn and how you will gradually um, become more successful in it. And how, to me, that sleeping at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., it's not a, um, I guess, a weird thing. It's like a everyday stuff. So you have to stay up that late in order to finish all of your um, work. I grew during the four year, but it's mostly that I don't give up. And how some of the advice is just actually, me, I want to follow my dreams, but at the same time, I want to be the best of the best. So I'm kind of stubborn. So I feel like if I do something, I have to do good in it. If you start with something, you finish it good. With that, could I please have Wyatt Booth and Nora Chen please come up, as well as um, co-principals uh, Tiffany Hardy and um, Principal Kev Kevin Davis. Please come forward. And finally this evening, we have Bethel High School. So let's look at their video. My name is Sierra Smith, and I'm the 2015 valedictorian at Bethel High School.
It was because we wanted to make sure that they had like the nutrition and the protein. Right, the protein. Right. right. Mm -hmm. It's very important because when they're homeless, remember that sometimes they can't get the fresh right. protein. Mm -hmm. So this will be yeah. an alternative for them. Okay. Okay. I volunteer with my church. We're, I'm in the missionary ministry there. So we like help to feed the homeless and we go to homeless shelters a lot and get to help people. So that's always just makes me happy. But my mom, and my dad, my mom especially, she um, was valedictorian of her high school class. She was she lived over on the Eastern Shore, so it was kind of small, but she still, <laughs> but she still worked really hard, and um, she didn't really have a lot. But now she's moved up, sort of. So she's kind of shown me the work of faith and also hard work. I was accepted to Howard University of Richmond, University of Virginia, Hampton, ODU, William and Mary. Washington College, East Carolina, UNC Chapel Hill. And I chose Howard University because when I got there, um, DC of course is really big, so I was really intimidated. But then once I got to see the campus and I got to see the student life and the biology department, um, I just fell in love with it. And I knew that was where I wanted to be for the next four years. They have a BSMD program that would allow me to finish my undergraduate studies in two years and then go straight on to medical school and finish everything in six years instead of eight. Well, I plan to become an emergency room physician. And um, when I was younger, I wanted to be a journalist. Like that was my main thing. I used to love writing and I used to love everything. It was after my grandmother died. She died when I was up in the fifth grade. She was my last living grandparent. And that kind of hit me hard, but then it also kind of made me interested in like, cause she died really suddenly and it made me interested in just the human body in general. So um, I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to be specifically, but then once I got in middle school, I saw the show, it's Untold Stories of the ER, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I wanna do. And then um, by being able to volunteer, that really solidified everything. So it's, it's high, it's fast paced, but I think I would really enjoy it cause you never know what you're gonna get. So it always keeps you on your toes. It's easy when you're in ninth grade, say, to think, oh, I have three more years, I'll be fine, I don't have to do my work or anything. And then next thing you know, you're a senior and you're missing a whole bunch of stuff. So um, starting early with that, starting early with scholarships, SATs, everything, because once you get it in early, then you can just relax and do your best to the end. <laughs> I'm Dominique DuBose and I'm the 2015 Coastal Tutorial at Bethel High School. Do you guys need the balls with them? Probably them. It's fun. I really enjoy it. Um, my coach from Hampton Christian, he got me interested in it. I wasn't even really thinking about soccer until like I played it and he told me I should try out for the team and then I like really liked playing and I was good at it so I kept it. Uh, without like the, all the academic stress I can like run it off. But I didn't think that I could be salutatorian because I came from a private school and with no AP classes or anything like that so I didn't think that I'd make it this far. I know God's like my number one like everything um, besides him, I guess my parents definitely because they encouraged my academics and always make sure you try to get straight A's, do your best and all that. I was accepted to Virginia Tech, UVA, William and Mary and George Mason. Um, I chose UVA because of the well-roundedness I guess that the university offers for me academically. Um, Virginia Tech was my first choice since November until about the last week of April when it was time to make my decision and I chose UVA instead. I was really gonna go to Virginia Tech because of the Corps of Cadets, but then what if I didn't like it? What if I didn't make it into the um, Air Force because of medical reasons or something like that? Um, I didn't wanna be like stuck at a college that I didn't really you know, wanna go to and for my major and you know, not really like it. And my second choice, are they, are they still a good school for my second option too? And UVA is just like good at everything. So I said I could really dabble around better at UVA, I guess. And they also have Air Force ROTC, so it's kind of getting the best of both worlds. Well, I'm really passionate about languages and cultures. I'm learning Russian on my own time. I'm trying to, that's one of the priority things that kind of comes last. 
But I really, really like languages, so I try to make time for it. And um, so I plan on hopefully getting something within the international relations, government affairs part. Um, in Russian, mostly because I know I wanted a critical language, because you want to, you want yeah, you kind of want the money too. So Russian or Arabic, and Russian came more naturally to me to persevere and prioritize. It was like my number, my number two, I guess, two things um, that are really, really important. Um, persevere because everybody, you're not alone when you're, um, you don't feel like doing work and stuff like that, but you stand out when you do do your work despite whether you want to do it or not, or you have other things to do. That's why you always put academics first, which is how I got this far, instead of, you know, if I focus more on soccer, my academics would have slipped. So, or focus on something else, it would have slipped. So, prioritize and keep going at it. Don't give up too soon. Hi, my name is Gavin Baker, and I'm the 2015 Bethel High School Co-Salutatorian. Back in my uh, middle school, I actually didn't really want to do band, but I just decided last minute to go for it, despite what my parents thought would be better, like tech ed or art or something like that. But I went for it, and I bonded uh, with the band director there, uh, Mr. Daniel Nipel. And from there on, it just became my passion. That's all I thought about. That's all I wanted to do was just play drums, feel rhythm, and it just inspired me to come to Bethel. And then it turns out Bethel I'm a little biased, but has like the best drum line in this area. I'd even put it against the state, but so I fit in naturally there. First semester or last semester last year, I knew that that's when we had initially had the tie, Dominique and I, and I was actually really worried because I knew Dominique was shooting up, and my whole thing was I knew I couldn't slack behind, and I actually wanted to tie more than I wanted it to be myself or her. And so at first I didn't believe that there was a tie and then I was excited because I mean the more the merrier. So I, I was happy, I was, I, was, I was ecstatic because now not only is it just Sierra and I up there but I get to share it with somebody else. I realized that the older I've gotten, it, I don't know how it is for them but me personally it's gotten harder to keep track of what I'm doing at a younger age where it's kind of drilled into your head, make good grades because it's easier to make good grades back then and it comes naturally and you keep progressing and you keep taking these harder classes and what has to change isn't your level of intelligence but your work ethic and the ability to say I'm gonna do this homework even though I really don't want to and so I think it's like I'm just training my brain to want to keep pushing myself rather than slack off now and regret it later. My uh, current percussion instructor Mr. Frank Lacrone and previous instructor uh, Sean David Hall those two gentlemen have completely influenced me not only in music but if there's an aspiration in life that I want to do I know that I can do it because I have that want uh, they really push me to have a drive for something and my parents have always told me you know times are tough in economy so we got to get you to college and so they've always been there for me if I've needed help they're always there they're always looking for ways to ensure that I can make it somewhere I did only apply to Norfolk State and Old Dominion University. I was accepted to both. The reason I did that was because I knew that I had a large chance of making it into these other great schools, but the person I am, if I know I have a goal, I know it's good to have backup plans, but I was ready to go after my goals, and I just wanted to focus solely on those two schools for now. I know a lot of my music friends are kicking me still for it. I won't be pursuing a any kind of career in music. I will be continuing to do it on the side. That is my passion. But maybe it's the person I am, but I think money is the most important thing. And I know that can seem really hard for some people that are like, you, you've been talking about doing your dreams and do what you love. How can you say go and just get money? 
But if I know, I think the most important thing is ensuring not only that I have a good future, but more importantly, my children, my grandchildren, they can have the opportunities that I wish I could have or could have had or had. So I decided to go with computer science and it has completely introduced a whole nother world to me. Um, I have a passion for that as well. I, I, it came to me, I had to work on it, but I, I can do it all day. That's, I, I love computer science. I didn't think I'd like it. I wasn't somebody who sat in front of a computer all the time, but once I did get in front of a computer, you can't take it away from me now. So now I'm trying to combine both. I'm actually working on a little project outside of school trying to create a music notation software. So that's what I hope to do after college, because I know um, one of my main reasons for picking Norfolk State over Old Dominion is because, of course, Norfolk State has the better drum line, but academics do come first, but Norfolk State actually does have a great computer science program, especially in cybersecurity. So I'm heading there first and then later to ODU, but I think the most important thing is to be able to push yourself farther than other people can push you because it can be really hard to get yourself out of the bed some mornings, and that's, I, I, I bet even Barack Obama has trouble sometimes saying, I wanna sleep in today, but he gets up and does it because he knows it's a job and he has people that rely on him. I think it's important to be able to tell yourself you can do something because you can do it, and you only, you're, you only limit yourself when you tell yourself you can't. So be able to, I struggle with this sometimes, but be able to put that foot down and march, do it, <laughs> just go for it. <laughs>
super superintendent since 2009. Whereas she's a product of Hampton City Schools, having attended John B. Carey Elementary School, Buck Road Junior High School, and graduated from Kikatan High School. Whereas she earned her Bachelor of Science degree in secondar secondary education from Old Dominion University, her massive, uh, Master's of Science in Vocational and Technical Education, and her Doctorate of Education in, edu in Educational Administration from Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University, and whereas she's married to Wayne Shiflett, and whereas from that union, a couple had two children, Matt and Mary, and two, two grandchildren, Jack and Ellie. Whereas with more than 40 years of educational experience in Hampton City Schools, Dr. Shiflett has held positions as business education teacher, cooperative office education coordinator, and deputy superintendent for instructional support. And whereas Dr. Shiflett has implemented and established numerous programs designed to ensure student success, including the division's Performance Learning Center, a credit recovery program that is currently in the top performing learning centers in the state of Virginia. And the adult education program was established at the campus at Lee School. And whereas Dr. Shiflett is the recipient of many awards, including the Educational Excellence Award from Virginia Tech and the Vocational Educator Award of Excellence from the Virginia Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. And whereas she is married, she, has she was named a 2009 Darden College of Education Fellow at Old Dominion University and a 2011 Woman of Distinction by the YMCA for dedication and commitment in the categories of education and racial justice and civil rights. And whereas Dr. Shiflett is, is responsible for the, the addition of career academies at our four high schools, the implementation of the 1.1 iPad initiative, the opening of two pre-K to eight schools, the establishing, establishment of, a, of the Spradley Gifted Center, and for raising the graduation rate and reducing the drop, drop, dropout rates in our schools. And whereas Armstrong School for the Arts was named a 2014 Blue Ribbon School during Dr. Shiflett's tenure. And Armstrong is only one of seven public schools in the state to earn this significant distinction. And whereas during Dr. Shiflett's tenure, the Hampton City School System was recognized one of the top, as one of the top ranked technology use districts in the whole US of A. And whereas under the leadership of Dr. Shiflett, the Hampton City Schools have been awarded the Association of School Business Officials International Meritorious Budget Award for excellence in budget presentations for six consecutive years. And whereas Dr. Shiflett has worked to ensure communication and engagement with our community via Facebook, Twitter, and Hampton City Schools email extra, which is a weekly email sent to more than 15,000 subscribers, which highlights the good news, good news about our schools. And whereas Dr. Shiflett initi initiated Hampton City Schools effort to open an employee wellness and health center designed to help employees achieve the highest level of wellness. And whereas Dr. Shiflett has worked tirelessly to make significant contributions to Hampton City Schools throughout her many community service endeavors and has generously given her time and talent to countless children throughout our community. Therefore, I, or therefore be resolved by the City Council of the City of Hampton, Virginia, that Dr. Linda Shiflett be, and is, and is hereby recognized to be presented a Distinguished Citizen Award from the City of Hampton, Virginia, for her commitment to Hampton, to Hampton City Schools and the City of Hampton. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be spread upon the minutes of the May 27, 2015 City Council meeting of the City of Hampton, Virginia, and that an appropriate copy be signed by the mayor, attested by the clerk, clerk, and presented to Dr. Shiflett. Now I will entertain a motion for the resolution as it was read. I'm honored to move the resolution as read. Second. Call the roll, please. 
Vice Mayor Curtis. Aye. Councilman Hobbs. Aye. Councilman Moffitt. Aye. Councilwoman Schmidt. Aye. Councilwoman Sneed. Aye. Councilman Tuck. Aye. Mayor Wallace. Aye. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make this a group effort, so we join me in making this presentation. Test, test, yes it is. Um, sir, this medal is presented to your wife for her enormous service to our community. And normally, when you pin a young lady or you put a ribbon around her neck, as I'm about to do, it means that we engage, but I know she's been previously spoken for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, aren't you? I have to tell you, I was, is that on? I was I didn't know this was happening. <laughs> I don't know who was behind it, <laughs> but I have to say that, um, sit down please. <laughs> um, I first want to say thank you to my husband. I couldn't have done all of this without his support, um, you know, the many nights out. But the, but the other piece of it is that um, you, can, you can be a great leader when you have great people working for you and when you have a great board that supports you, and when you have a city manager that you can pick up the phone at any time and talk about the issues that you might have and concerns. And I know that many of my peers don't have that kind of relationship, and it makes such a tremendous difference. And so I accept this on behalf of all the people that have helped me along the way, that have provided the support and have provided the encouragement. So thank you very, very much. Uh, this concludes our spotlight on citizen initiative. We'll reconvene shortly. Thank you very much.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I'll now convene the evening session of council and ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Curtis. Present. Councilman Hobbs. Present. Councilman Moffitt. Present. Councilwoman Schmidt. Here. Councilwoman Snead. Here. Councilman Tuck. Present. Mayor Wallace. Here. Tonight's invocation will be given by Vice Mayor Linda Curtis, and following the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. We ask special blessings tonight on our valedictorians and salutatorians for their teachers, for their principals, and for their families who have helped them on their way. We also ask your special blessings for Dr. Shiflett as she faces her retirement. For this body, Lord, we ask wisdom, patience, understanding, and compassion as we serve our community. And finally, Lord, let us all, all of us members of this community, remember that your words were to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What? Pipe down, pirates! What? I. What? What is this? What? The pirates are here. Oh my goodness! It's that time of year again. All right. Time for the Blackbeard Pirate Festival right here in beautiful downtown Hampton. They followed me. Ah, so. Hi. Come around. Gather round. Gather round. Hi. So nice to see council, Mr. Mayor, Madam Vice Mayor, council members, Madam Attorney, Madam City Manager, greetings. We are, of course, the Blackbeard's pirate crew from right here in beautiful downtown Hampton. And as you know, every year, for some reason, the fine town folk of this fair city gives us safe harbor for a weekend. And with that in mind, I have a proclamation for council, just I so do. that, uh, where is my educated one? Ah, there he is. Read the proclamation. Be it known by all present, whereas the 16th annual Blackbeard's Pirate Festival is now upon us, and that the fine townsfolk of Hampton have once again agreed to provide safe harbor to history's most notorious, but just misunderstood, <laughs> by radical pirates and wenches, the Blackbeard's crew pledged to plunder and pillage only designated plundering and pillaging areas, <laughs> unless we get bored. <laughs> also, let it be known that thanks to the efforts of both the members of the Blackbeard's crew, as well as the fine townsfolk of Hampton, the Blackbeard's festival has gained notoriety as one of the top three events in Americas. <laughs> Furthermore, the members of the Blackbeard's crew shall give no quarter, shall ever remain vigilant, will fight tooth and nail, or with blade and cannon, to elevate the Hampton Blackbeard Pirate Festival to the number one pirate festival in the country. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Having the finest living history encampment, the finest collection of arms and cannon, holding true to our pledge of authenticity and very soon with our own 18th century heavily armed sailing vessel, the Sloop Luna, the Blackbeard's crew, the Hampton Blackbeard Pirate Festival, and the city of Hampton shall truly be the envy of all others. Not only shall we be the number one, but none will ever be a close second. The pirates have a goal of once again placing Hampton on the maps and charts as the premier location of maritime and piratical history in the new world. Be it so commanded by Captain Constable Heartless, let no pirate, <laughs> privateer, able-bodied sailor or wench question or challenge this command or they shall suffer the penalty of flogging. Signed in blood by the captain 
of the Blackbeard's crew on this, the 27th day of May, in the year of our Lord, 2015. Aye. Aye, aye. To the clerk there. It's official, so. All right, back. You know, it's hard to get an educated crew man yeah. can actually read that. <laughs> the 16th year. Can you imagine? And we have gotten to the top three. All right. No, no, no one else can really come close to our festival here in Hampton. The other two, they're pirate parties that last two weeks in duration. Yeah. We're going to hold true to our values. Amen. We want to keep families and people coming into the city. Aye. And uh, that's our goal. Now, we mentioned about our ship. As you know, the Blackbeard's crew and the Colonial Seaport Foundation have been working on a ship for years. Eight Aye. years, eight and a half. When we were in Charleston and we captured the great town folk and city leadership of Charleston, we held them for ransom. Our ransom was medicine. Our crew members needed medicine because we had been down in the islands and the ladies. And, but anyway, <laughs> <coughs> one of the politicians that we captured, the good town folk of Charleston actually paid us to keep him. I thought it was a good deal. <laughs> and now we're stuck. So now I have to use him for things like explaining about our ship. So if the Dutchman would come up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to present to you the model of Luna. This is our 18th century floating classroom, it's a Bermuda sloop, uh, which would be very typical of uh, vessels that would be in the Hampton Roads area, 1718 when Blackbeard reigned in uh, the area. A uh, little bit further down the line in history, a very similar vessel to this would be found on the Chesapeake Bay uh, that would be used as a privateer against the British. Vessels like this were actually used during the seeds of uh, the revolution that founded our great country. Luna is going to be 47 feet on deck. Total sparred length, which is from end to end, 76 feet. She draws five feet. She will be able to fit into the Hampton River at our, at our very own docks. Uh, unlike a lot of the tall ships that we've tried to get into, into the festivals before, they won't fit. She's specifically designed to fit in this area. Uh, she's actually going to be a floating classroom. Everyone will be welcome on board to learn about life of sailors and the communities in the 18th century, specifically in the Hampton Roads area. We intend on using her uh, pretty much exclusively on the Albemarle Sound and the Chesapeake Bay. She's not going to be leaving our home waters. Uh, we're going to have this model set up in the encampment down at Mill Point Park. We're also going to have information about the entire project that we have going on where you can learn more about Blackbeard's crew and the Colonial Seaport Foundation. I invite everyone to please come by and visit and learn about our very special project that we have, have in the works. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So as you can see, we've been busy. Uh, we're getting very, very close to getting the ship in the water. It's going to be a beautiful sight down on the Hampton River, hopefully on the Hampton River. Uh, it'll be very typical of what was there during the 18th century. So. It's all authentic, and, and that's what we're going to hold true to. Now, as far as the festival, everyone's coming, right? This weekend, aye, aye. we have the Grand Pirates Ball Friday night, and then Saturday all day, pirating until your heart's content, and then the fireworks, the grandest fireworks display, in my humble opinion, anywhere. And uh, then we have sea battles as well, and all day Sunday. So uh, I'm hoping everyone please come out and, and see the pirates. Uh, we're doing it for you and for the fine town folk of this fair city. And with that, I think I've used up my five minutes. But he's talking. <laughs> anyway, pirates, be off with you. All right. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, with the sound of my voice, come on down to Hampton and let the fun, frolic, and pun begin.
Um, I also like to mention at this particular point in time is that um, tonight is the initiation of the baseball season at the Peninsula Pirates Stadium. So um, if you get some time between the stadium and uh, the fun and frolicking that will be taking place downtown, we have a lot of great venues in our community this weekend. We have four items on tonight's consent agenda, and I'll ask the clerk to read the protocol and the summary. The protocol for the consent agenda. The consent agenda is comprised of non-controversial matters before the council which require a vote by council. Due to their routine nature, typically these items are adopted by one motion without separate discussion. Tonight's consent agenda approves three sets of minutes, makes housekeeping amendments to chapter 38, vehicles for hire, ratifies council's actions approving the fiscal year 2015, third quarter budget adjustments, and approves a memorandum of understanding between Hampton and Pocosin addressing a coastal resiliency initiative where two cities will join together to fund a staff position in this area. I'll now ask for a motion on items one through four, please, from the consent agenda. Move for approval on items one through four. Second. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Curtis. Aye. Councilman Hobbs. Aye. Councilman Moffitt. Aye. Councilwoman Schmidt. Aye. Councilwoman Sneed. Aye. Councilman Tuck. Aye. Mayor Wallace. Aye. As we have no public hearings uh, on tonight's agenda, we'll move to item five that we just passed, which is an amendment on the ordinance regarding cur curfews for minors. And I'll ask uh, Madam City Manager to, and the City Attorney to give some information on that item. Actually, uh, Chief Salt's here to address you on the matter of the curfew. As he's coming up, I will remind you that a couple of years ago, we actually changed our curfew to be um, more um, clear about our community expectations and standards for juveniles unsupervised in the evening hours. And our current curfew, of course, has um, many exceptions, including when children are accompanied by their parents um, or at school events and the like. Um, but as we have been uh, reviewing our curfew and noted some other changes that are being made in the region, we thought it was time to also update ours once again. And with that as an introduction, Chief Salt will um, present to you the, the proposal. Mayor, Council, thank you very much for this opportunity. What we're asking are for some slight modifications to our current ordinance. And uh, as the manager just mentioned, our current ordinance uh, uh, establishes a curfew for those under 14 years of age between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, and for those over 14 uh, from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, recently Newport News uh, has changed their ordinance and they've been in some discussions on that and it's recently passed and what we're trying to do is align uh, our ordinances pretty closely as closely as possible with their ordinance uh, for a number of reasons one is for for education uh, when we do publicity on how we educate the community on what the ordinances should be, they'll be consistent across the board. Also for ease of understanding. You start getting ordinances that apply an hour here, or difference, a couple of hours difference here and there, it can make all the difference in the world of where you're standing in our neighborhoods. On one street, you're in Newport News, and you cross a street, you're in, you're in Hampton. And so we would like those ordinances to be consistent across the board and easier for people to understand easier for when we need to take action and we need to enforce the ordinance, then it's easier for our people to understand and we can eliminate some of the confusion uh, and legitimate uh, confusion by the public. Uh, and, and of course, the whole purpose behind the, the, uh, a, a curfew to begin with is to address our youth violence issues that we have and to protect our children out there on the street. So what we're basically asking is a, is a, is a shift uh, and first off, I'll address the 5 a.m. and moving it to 6 a.m. Uh, we're wanting to come in compliance with uh, state statute, uh, which is uh, a 6 a.m. instead of 5 a.m., so that brings us consistent with that. Uh, and then uh, we'll make a modification uh, to, that would uh, state that 14-year-olds uh, are seven days a week. Is t the curfew is 10 p.m. to uh, 6 a.m. Uh, the, probably the biggest change or adjustment is for those 14 and above, uh, and that modification is changing it from 11 to 10 p.m. Uh, it's making it from uh, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., and that would be uh, Sunday through Thursday. And then it virtually remains about the same uh, for the weekends, which is 11 p.m. Uh, to 6 a.m. And so those are the, ch the changes. It's basically an hour here and there 
uh, to align us to make it more uh, consistent with our partner in Newport News. And make no mistake, we work very, very closely uh, with Newport News. Uh, when they do an enforcement action, we need to kind of mirror that enforcement action there. When, when they were doing community education, the, the more consistent the information that we can put out and less confusing for the public is, is, is makes all the difference in the world. Okay, any, Mr. Tuck, question? Yeah, one, one thing that comes to mind, I, I suppose, is who had their curfew first, and we are making changes to align with Newport News, but then Newport News consult us to say, you know, what does Hampton have? We will align ourselves with Hampton. Uh, I can't give you the history. It, the, the curfews were established before I got here. The modifications were made. Uh, I think uh, we can get probably get a history from the manager. Uh, but the modifications uh, are, uh, you know, who, whose idea it was to make the initial change. Uh, probably Newport News made some changes first uh, in that. Uh, and our modifications, we needed to make some slight modifications. This just kind of prompted us into doing it. Well, uh, it, two years ago when we changed it to the current, before the, the proposed amendments, we initiated it. And we initiated it when there were several acts of youth violence and um, many of those acts were young people who were unsupervised in those late hours of the evening and it was one of many actions you may recall that we took and at that point um, we did consult with Newport News to let them know that we were changing and they were not of the mind to change theirs at that point so we were if you will um, we, we were the first to modernize uh, and update our code more recently they decided to move closer to what we had, but added a twist that we didn't have, which was the Sunday through Thursday time period, and then you know aligning with the state code of 6 a.m. So when they made us aware of that change, we said we might as well go ahead, as the chief mentioned, and update. But, but two years ago, we, we changed first. And I don't know that it matters really, because we're, as the chief mentioned, we're trying to do a lot in sync with one another and in partnership. We have a very active partnership, as the chief has alluded to on many occasions, and so um, it does make sense for us to be as lined as possible. Okay. Ms. Smith. This says the offense would be a class four misdemeanor, and that carries a $250 fine? Yes, it's consistent. Parent? It's consistent with what it was before. I think it's $250. 250 fine. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion and a second for this item. I move for approval. Second. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Curtis. Aye. Councilman Hobbs. Aye. Councilman Moffitt. Aye. Councilwoman Schmidt. Aye. Councilwoman Sneed. Aye. Councilman Tuck. Aye. Mayor Wallace. Aye. Now, now I ask the clerk to read a motion required for appointments um, that we're going to be making this evening. As a reminder, no second is required for appointments. The motion required is to reappoint Brian DiProfio to the Peninsula Town Center CDA to his first full term, which will expire on March 31st, 2019, and that we appoint Judy Carr to fill the unexpired portion of a term to expire March 31st, 2016, and Nick Hobbs as an alternate to serve until March 31st, 2019. I make that motion. Roll call, please. Vice Mayor Curtis. Aye. Councilman Hobbs. Aye. Councilman Moffitt. Aye. Councilwoman Schmidt. Aye. Councilwoman Sneed. Aye. Councilman Tuck. Aye. Mayor Wallace. Aye. Are there any reports by council members or c committee members or any other miscellaneous new business? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I do have a question, and I intended to actually ask it earlier this afternoon. Um, I think this month makes about two years that we've been providing security at the uh, our property at school for deaf and blind and disabled. And I was just curious as to where we are in terms of hiring someone to demolish those structures so we can save that money for security. The um, Housing Authority um, was working with the EPA and DEQ to get the environmental permits necessary because as we've discussed before, but for the benefit of the public, the facility ha is an older facility and it has certain potential hazardous uh, materials that have to be properly handled so as to not cause issues in the neighborhood or the, you know, the surrounding area. Um, 
interestingly enough, I, I sent an email earlier today to say, where is that? Uh, because we were um, chatting about the Virginia School on a different matter. And um, I will need to get you an update. I know it was moving to bid, and then there was a question about the bid, and so I need to see how that was resolved, and I can have a more complete answer for you, um, you know, tomorrow or Friday, once I get a chance to get that update from them. But it's it's not for lack of trying. It's just a very lengthy process when you have a, an older facility to make sure you do it properly, as of course we would want to do. Mr. Moffitt. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a public service announcement. Uh, celebrating fathers and role models. Uh, this is a celebration uh, that will be held on Sunday, June 7, 2015, from 2 to 6 p.m. at the Hampton YMCA and at the Virginia Baseball Academy at 1322 LaSalle Avenue. The event is sponsored by the Hampton Branch NAACP, along with a host of partners to include law enforcement, uh, the Hampton Commonwealth's Attorney's Office, the Hampton Police Department, the Hampton Sheriff's Office, the Hampton YMCA, along with uh, the Virginia, uh, I mentioned the Virginia Baseball Academy, Old Point National Bank, Ethos After School Program, the City of Hampton's Parks and Recreation, Hampton City Schools, the Department of Social Services, Hampton Redevelopment and Housing Authority. And although the title says Celebrating Fathers and Role Models, that is op it is open to all families. And there may not be a father in the house, but there may be a mother or a sister that is a role model. Uh, we want like all of the community to come out and share in this great event. There will be symposiums uh, interacting with law enforcement uh, at 2 p.m., best practices in parenting. And there will be entertainment, games, uh, basketball prizes, football, and a resource job fair. And for more information, you can dial 287-0277. And again, that's celebrating fathers and role models. That's on June 7, 2015. Thank you. Right. Mrs. Smith. Uh, yes, um, serving on the um, Hampton Clean City Commission, I received an email last week, which was pleasing. Um, it was an email and it stated that Hampton has been awarded the Keep America Beautiful grant $20,000 grant, and this will be t used to add a new community garden in the with section of the neighborhood, um, in the with neighborhood. Um, to thank you, I'd like to thank Debbie Blanton and Wendy Lyles, who is currently in charge of the community gardens, who worked on this together to receive this grant. Okay. Now, I'll ask, I'll open up the, the uh, public comment period, and I ask the clerk to read the protocol for public comment. The protocol for the public comment period. The purpose of city council meetings is to conduct the city's business. It is not a public forum in which people can speak on any matter. However, the city council allows for public comment at the end of the regular business meeting, limited to matters on which the council has the power and authority to act. You may sign up to speak in the lobby of city hall one half hour prior to the meeting and until 7 p.m. The mayor will call you to speak in the order of sign up. Each speaker is limited to one card. Each individual will have three minutes to speak. To save time, it is requested that speakers alternate between the podium and the freestanding microphone. If speaker number one is speaking from the podium, speaker number two may proceed to the freestanding mic and so on. All comments shall be directed to the council. Speakers may not yield their time to another speaker. Speakers should address the council with decorum on issues or topics which the city council has the power to address. Speakers should refrain, however, from personal attacks when making such comments. Speakers should also refrain from using the public comment period for making political campaign speeches. The audience is asked to be respectful of all speakers. It is the council's practice to listen to speakers and not engage in dialogue. After all speakers have been heard, the city manager, city attorney, and or members of council may respond as appropriate. Please note that you will be directed to leave the podium for failure to comply with this protocol after fair warning from the presiding officer. Failure to comply with such directive may result in removal. Thank you very much. We have three speakers tonight. Um, the first two speakers are Ms. Linda Seeley and the second speaker is Mr. Edwin Boone.
I'm Linda Seeley. I reside at 118 Horsley Drive. I'm here again tonight to speak on the need to have a dedicated animal control personnel to trap the many stray and feral cats that roam in Hampton. I appreciate, I want you to listen to this very carefully because I mean it from my heart. I appreciate your effort to get an animal control technician's vacancy posted months ago. But here we are starting summer and we still do not have anyone on board. You recall I told you in January, listen very closely, that we would not have anyone hired by June and we do not. And can you imagine, now this is where y'all deserve credit, and can you imagine if the vacancy had not even been advertised until June, it would be Christmas, I'm telling you the truth, because y'all don't know the players, you don't know what's going on, you're not on the street because you've got this big city to run. It would be Christmas before someone comes on board, unless someone steps up. Somebody's got to step up, because when you're in the corner looking at walls all day, and you're bored and you don't like your job, who cares if you get somebody hired or not? So I want you to know about a recent example as <clears throat> to why we need someone doing regular trapping. It's only 29 hours a week. For years I have reported stray and feral cats on Grimes Road for years since 2003. I recall that in the past year, Officer Taylor was very successful in trapping on Grimes Road. She was a young lady and she found areas where those cats were. She was really energetic and doing something about it. You can, re you can review the animal control monthly reports and it will show you that the month of January 14, I gotta hurry up. Let, okay, let me s uh, share an example as why it's unfortunate that trapping is not routinely being done on Grimes Road. Last week I received a call from Grimes Road citizen saying she had a mother with five kittens and had been born on her property and needed them picked up. I told her to call uh, 611 to report this. Please know I routinely tell people to report things to 611, but they one, but they refuse to do so for whatever reason, to ensure that the animals receive assistance, um, so I make the call to help them. In closing, it is very unfortunate that we have been without an animal control technician since 2014. I am again asking you as a taxpayer and citizen of Hampton to please see that um, a regular trapping uh, efforts are performed. And because um, this mother, their babies and mothers all over the streets. So please do what you can as uh, I'm speaking um, as a citizen and taxpayer. Please help these animals. I won't ever be down here to box your faces and everything on any taxes or anything. I'm only here for one thing kitty cats. You'll never see me down here for anything. I don't care if you knock people's heads off, knocked out the windows. I don't get involved. It's all about the animals. Thank never know me for anything but the animals. Thank you, Miss Ely. We, heard, we, heard, we hear you. After Mr. Boom, the next speaker will be Mr. Uh, Hugh Bassett. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Edwin Boone. I reside at 48 Snow Street. <clears throat> Through the Freedom of Information Act, I want to have a list of the people and addresses and the results of citizens coming for help to fix up homes and their houses were condemned and purchases made and all the related costs concerned. I want the list of the lots sold and future selling for $1 or near price to developers, original costs before purchase and resulting payments. <clears throat> On September the 26th, Friday, 2014, it has the Hampton Housing Authority pushing land to developers. Also, I want to mention about May 10th, 2015, Hampton Settles, Settles posts this lawsuit right, <clears throat> right here. Hampton will pay $300 to the federal government and whistleblower 
Elizabeth Green. Only way that the federal government knew about it because of the whistleblower, Elizabeth Green. And if I have it correctly, um, I think she got paid $50,000 for being a whistleblower. If I have it correct, I'm sure that you're going to mention on that if it's not true. Also, I'd like to mention again uh, the Daily Press, March 31st. FBI seeks tips on public officials. The 800, the, the number is 1 844 FIGHTPC. <clears throat> the way it has it said, if the governor, McDonald, can go to jail and the, the individual, Hamilton, can go to jail, well, the FBI seeks tips on public officials. Anybody can go to jail that's under them. So they want, they need concrete ev evidence, and some of them have been around for 30 years. And you can't tell me that something ain't happening within them 30 years that someone knows about it. So the FBI is looking for, in for uh, information on crooked officials. <clears throat> 